Uh, how you doing? Talk about happiness. <laughs> we know that many, many people strive for happiness all the time. It's like they have an emptiness within them that they want to fill. And they are constantly going for happiness. But there is a law that says you're happy when you go into, um, say, a mild state of sadness or depression, etc. It goes back and forth. So happiness. So happiness, sadness works on a continuum. And so the person who seeks happiness is also seeking sadness. That's just the way it works. It's the way of our, our planet. It works that way. Because the our planet declines, it rocks, and its journey around the sun, called a declination. It declines about 23.5 degrees, let's say below the equator, and then it comes back up 23.5 degrees. So it's a backward and forward. Just like the happiness sadness continuum, it's the same thing. So, it, and sometimes some spiritualists or some spiritual institutions or cults use happiness medicinally. Yeah. They use it for some illness. Uh, we've been told that uh, people in hospitals are better off if they have like um, high spirits. I presume they're talking about a little happiness, pleasure, etc. So that they're better off, that this state of consciousness, this happiness, will help them overcome their ailment. So it's used, happiness is used in this way. And uh, apparently it works. If people continue using it this way, what they've been doing it for thousands of years. Okay. So we have, uh, we have the example of a pendulum, like the grandfather's clock, the pendulum back and forth. This is the way happiness, sadness goes on this continuum. Happiness, sadness. But there is a dead point of balance. Right in the middle. But the pendulum, happiness, sadness, thing swings right across it. If a person could manage to swing the pendulum within himself down, by degrees, slow the pendulum down, there to the dead point of balance. This is, this is that state where the cerebral cortex is like arrested and uh, so there's no thinking there's no uh, feelings of anxiety or fear or contempt, hate, or hatred, any of those things, any of those feelings, any of those uh, passions, all of them are absent when a person's in this state, okay? But many other things can arise from this condition. As we talked about yesterday, the sixth sense. It can arise from this condition. When we're in a perfect state of balance, 
probably anything, and anything in the world can uh, at least, you know, mentally or psychologically or spiritually can arise from this state of balance. It's like a gear in an automobile. When it's in neutral, a state of balance, it can be taken in any direction. And we, too, can go in any direction we choose when we are in a state of, we can call it, neutrality or equilibrium. Okay. So we know that uh, there's a law called regression toward the mean. This tells us that everything tends towards an average. So this law also tells us that the person who is happy and sad at times can bring these two conditions to a state of equilibrium, balance. That would be the average, you see. And here's there's uh, the laws of opposites have reconciled. They have become one. And this is a state that is usually, I would say, not encountered until a person dies. Assuming that when a person dies, there is no opposition within him. There is simply reconciliation of all the opposing forces. You see? So, in these talks, it should be brought up uh, the value of laws, understanding the laws, and, if possible, living by them consciously. Live by the laws consciously. Well, this is one. The law of regression toward the mean. Knowing that if you do certain things, that uh, you will come to the opposite. Back and forth like that. So, knowing these laws, you can plan for the outcome of certain things. You know this is going to happen. Or on, on, when you're on course to accomplish something, you can expect sometimes um, a setback. Knowing that this, these setbacks are likely to occur will eliminate, let's say, the possibility of frustration, discouragement, and giving up your, pro your, your, uh, your project. These laws are active all the time. They're natural laws that we could live by to help us in life, whether it's a spiritual quest we're after or whether it's just working on any project here in the material world. You see? So knowing the laws would be very important to us and we will, uh, I will talk about them from time to time and bring these laws to people's attention. But <clears throat> people, all of us, we experience these laws all the time and don't realize it because they're acting all the time. They're active everywhere. People just don't realize it because they're too busy doing this, that, or whatever, uh, like trying to be happy. So we, we, so yeah, we should at least be conscious that these laws are there. These laws are are there at, at our disposal. We can use them. Okay. <clears throat>